In this video, I want to explain the intuition behind the conditional independence assumption, which we introduced in the last video, and explain why it allows us to at least conditionally evaluate the average cause and effect. So in the last video, we had that the expectation of the average or the causal effect given a district's level of income was actually equal to the expected value or the difference between V1i minus V0i given a particular district's level of income. And we call this particular term on the right hand side, we called it the average causal effect um, conditional on income. And in this video I just want to provide a little bit of intuition by, for what exactly we mean by given a district's level of income. So writing it out mathematically, essentially what we have is that V1i and V0i are independent of Di given a district's level of income. So that's the income of a district i. So what exactly does this mean conditional on the income of a particular district? Well, what we can do is we can think about Di, whether or not a particular state receives um, infrastructure spending, or the decision as to whether or not a state receives infrastructure spending as being composed of two components. There is the component of DI, which is due to selection on the basis of income. And importantly, this is non-randomly selected. So I'm sort of taking this whole bar here to represent DI or the variance in DI. And so this whole part here is a part which is associated with selection bias because we know that states which are possibly poorer might be those states which are more likely to receive infrastructure spending. But then there is also a part of DI which is in a sense random and it's this bit on the right hand side here. And these are essentially, or this is the variance in DI which is not to do with the income of that particular state. So what we could do is if we could remove this effect which was due to the income of that particular state, so that's this bit on the left hand side here, then what we'd be left with would be a purely randomly selected treatment. And we know that randomly selected treatment, in that circumstance, we can basically just compare the difference in means between the two groups because it doesn't matter. There is no difference in the two groups um, in terms of their individual characteristics. Here it's slightly different. Essentially, there, what we could say is that there is no difference between the two groups once we have removed the effect of income. Another way to think about this is if you imagine doing a regression of DI. So you're regressing DI on the level of income, and there is also a sort of error term which captures all the other effects or the, or the other part of DI, which is random, essentially. So obviously this first part of DI is that which is non-randomly selected. So that's the sort of systematic part of DI, which is due to selection on the basis of the income of that particular district. And hence, this error term here, as I said before, this is the part of DI which is randomly selected. So then, if I take DI and I remove the effect which is systematic, so that's this sort of income effect here, what I'm left with is a pure randomly selected part of DI. And so essentially what we actually mean up here when we say that V1i and V0i are conditionally independent of um, DI, conditional on income, what we actually mean is that V1i and V0i are independent of this random part of DI, which is called epsilon i in my notation. And essentially when we remove that part of DI which is conditional on income, well, because we're just left with this randomly selected part of DI, in that circumstance, the selection bias goes to zero. So when we condition on a particular state's level of income, and assuming that all the other factors which influence selection are essentially random, then we're just left with selection bias equal to zero. And in that circumstance, the difference in means between the two groups in terms of the mean level of violence that evaluates to the average causal effect.